it's there, and better uh, health is up there. I can go here and I can split Sub-Saharan Africa into its countries. And when it bursts, the size of East Country Bubble is the size of the population. Sierra Leone down there, Mauritius up there. Mauritius was the first country to get away with trade barriers and they could sell their sugar, they could sell their textiles on equal terms as the people in Europe and North America. There's a huge difference between Africa and Ghana is here in the middle. In Sierra Leone, humanitarian aid, here in uh, Uganda, development aid, here time to invest, there you can go for holiday. Uh, it's a tremendous variation within Africa, which we very often make that it's equal everything. I can split South Asia here, India is the big bubble in the middle, but huge difference between Afghanistan and Sri Lanka. And I can split Arab states, how are they? Same climate, same culture, same religion, huge difference. Even between neighbors, Yemen civil war, United Arab Emirates money, which was quite equally and well used. Not as the myth is. And that includes all the children of the foreign workers who are in the country. Data is often better than you think. Many people say that data is bad. There is an uncertainty margin. But we can see the difference here, Cambodia, Singapore. The differences are much bigger than the weakness of the data. East Europe, Soviet economy for a long time, but they come out after 10 years very, very differently. And there is Latin America. Today we don't have to go to Cuba to find a healthy country in Latin America. Chile will have a lower child mortality than Cuba within some few years from now. And here we have high income countries in OECD, and we get the whole pattern here of the world, which is more or less like, like this. And if we look at it, how it looks the world, in 1960, it starts to move, 1960, this is Mao Zedong, he brought health to China, and then he died, and then Deng Xiaoping came and brought money to China, and brought them into the mainstream again. And we have seen how countries move in different directions like this. So it's sort of, sort of difficult to get an example country which shows the pattern of the world. But I would like to bring you back to about here at uh, 1960. Eh? And I would like to compare uh, um, South Korea, which is this one, with, with Brazil, which is this one. The label went away for me here. And I would like to compare Uganda, which is there. Eh? And I can run it forward like this. Eh? And you can see how South Korea is making a very, very fast advancement, whereas Brazil is much slower. And if we move back again here, and we put on trails on them like this, you can see again that the speed of development is very, very different. And the countries are moving more or less in the same rate as money and health. But it seems you can move much faster if you are healthy first than if you are wealthy first. And to show that, you can put on the way of United Arab Emirates. They came from here, a mineral country. They catch all the oil, they got all the money, but health cannot be bought at the supermarket. You have to invest in health. You have to get kids into schooling. You have to train health staff. You have to educate the population. And Sheikh Zayed did that in a fairly good way. And in spite of falling oil prices, he brought this country up here. So we got a much more mainstream appearance of the world, where all countries tend to use their money better than they used in the past. Now, this is more or less if you look at, if you look at the average data of the countries. They are like this. Now, that's dangerous to use average data because there's such a lot of difference within countries. So if I go and look here, we can see that Uganda, that today is where South Korea was 1960. If I split Uganda, there's quite a difference within Uganda. These are the quintiles of Uganda. The richest 20% of Ugandans are there. The poorest are down there. If I split South Africa, it's like this. And if I go down and look at Niger, where there was such a terrible famine, lastly, it's like this. The 20% poorest of Niger is out here, and the 20% richest of South Africa is there, and yet 
we tend to discuss on what solutions there should be in Africa. Everything in this world exists in Africa. And you can't discuss universal access to HIV for that quintile up here with the same strategy as down here. The improvement of the world must be highly contextualized. And it's not relevant to have it on regional level. We must be much more detailed. We find that students get very excited when they can use this. And even more policymakers and the corporate sectors would like to see, see how the world is changing. Now, why doesn't this take place? Why are we not using the data we have? We have data in the United Nations, in the national statistical agencies, and in universities and other non-governmental organizations, because the data is hidden down in the databases. And the public is there, and the internet is there, but we have still not used it effectively. All that information we saw changing in the world does not include publicly funded statistics. There are some web pages like this, you know, but they take some uh, nourishment down from the databases, but people put prizes on them. Stupid passwords and boring statistics. <laughs> and this won't work. So what is needed? We have the databases. It's not a new database you need. We have wonderful design tools, and more and more are added up here. So we started a non-profit venture, uh, which we called Linking data to design, we call it Gapminder from London Underground, where they warn you, mind the gap. So we thought Gapminder was appropriate. And we started to write software which could link the data like this. And it wasn't that difficult. It took some person years, and we have produced animations. You can take a data set and put it there. We are liberating UN data. Some few UN organizations, some countries accept that their databases can go out on the world. But what we really need is, of course, a search function. A search function where we can copy the data up to a searchable format and get it out in the world. And what do we hear when we go around? I've done anthropology on the main statistical units. Everyone says it's impossible. This can't be done. Our information is so peculiar and detailed, so that cannot be searched as other can be searched. We cannot give the data free to the students, free to the entrepreneurs of the world. But this is what we would like to see, isn't it? The publicly funded data is down here, and we would like flowers to grow out on the net. And one of the crucial points is to make them searchable, and then people can use the different design tool to animate it there. And I have a pretty good news for you. I have a good news that the present new head of UN Statistics, he doesn't say it's impossible. He only says, we can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a quite clever guy. Huh? <laughs> so we can see a lot happening in data in the coming years. We will be able to look at income distributions in completely new ways. Huh? This is the income distribution of China, 1970. This is the income distribution of the United States, 1970. Almost no overlap. Almost no overlap. And what has happened? What has happened is this, that China is growing, it's not so equal any longer, and it's appearing here, overlooking the United States, almost like a ghost, isn't it? Huh? It's pretty scary. <laughs> <laughs> But I think it's very important to have, have all this information. We need, we need really to see it. And uh, instead of looking at this, I would like to end up by showing the internet users per 1,000. In this software, we access about 500 variables from all the countries quite easily. It takes some time to, to, to change for this. But on the axis, you can quite easily get any variable you would like to have. And the thing would be to get up the databases free, to get them searchable, and with a second click to get them into the graphic formats where you can instantly understand them. Now, the statisticians doesn't like it because they say that this will not, this will not um, uh, show the, the reality. We have to have statistical analytical methods. But this is hypothesis generating. I end now with the world there the internet are coming, the number of internet users are going up like this. This is the GDP per capita, and it's a new technology coming in, but in amazingly how well it fits 
to the economy of the countries. Eh? That's why the $100 computer will be so important. But it's a nice tendency. It's, it's as if the world is flattening off, isn't it? These countries are lifting more than the economy. And it will be very interesting to follow this over the year, as I would like you to be able to do with all the publicly funded data. Thank you very much.